else with it, Mark? Mark, you look like a hostage. Mark, do something else with it. I can't do it. it. Look at look at us both. Oh my god. We oh look my awful. Mad. Why Sit can't up. we have Sit a nice something. light like other people on YouTube? We did and it broke. Jeez. Sit on something, Mad. You look awful. Mad, you look like a tiny person. Can't you lift it up a bit and tip it? Yeah, then they'll see that. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you what we can do. We can do this. We're up here because all the kids are downstairs and we didn't want to make them have to leave the sitting room so we could do a live because that would be just too social media for words. Oh yeah, just horrendous. Could, would everyone mind leaving the lounge, please? Is that better? Not really. Not really. I mean, you look deranged and I look we'll like... We'll just have to look like... I shit. look like Ken Dodd. It's all right. Uh, evening, evening, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Evening, if you can hear a fan, or if that fan is actually hitting the microphone, which it could be, I wouldn't do that. Anyone else? Come on, let's just have one minute moaning about the I heat. I like that dog in that advert. Oh my God, it's so hot. How are we all? Who's hot? Star Main, can you talk about Katie Prive and Carl? Who's Katie Prive? Um, yes, I don't really know what's going on with oh, that Price, story. Oh, Katie the Price. the strangest of stories. Is there a story? What's the story? Wow. Well, Hi, Hazel Malbon. Hi, Marcia. What is the story? Well, the story was, it was about a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? But the police were called and um, the story was that Katie had been punched in the face while she was just sitting watching television. And there was a charge of coercive control, bullying oh. and a punch and physical violence. By who? Well, we didn't know. A man was arrested, blah, 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 this, this, this going on. Anyway, then a few days ago, her boyfriend put out a statement saying it wasn't me. And I thought, oh, I never thought it was you. I thought it was a person that had just strange. come into the house. But then I thought, how could a person just come into the house and coercively control you? Anyway, so the news today is that both her children have unfollowed him, which of course... Oh, does, does that suggest it was him? Well, we don't. How can we possibly oh. know? Unless it's moved on a bit. I saw the story this morning. Has it moved on, guys? Oh. John Hardman. Welcome to the family guest area. I don't Welcome have a pen, I just have a brush. To the family guest area. Welcome, welcome. We've got some new treats coming to the family guest area. I um, I did that in here last time I was in here. I got carried away. What are you doing? I'm finding something to write things Oh, on. Mark! Listen, why can't you get a pad and... A fucking pen. Right, we're gonna. He's we're, a writer as well. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. We're never in my office. We're never. We're never in my office. What's that? God, that's from eight years ago. Uh, we're never in my office where I have lots of pads and paper. We're always just making ends meet at your desk. Yeah, but your... you know you're gonna sit and do the live. And you hang on a minute. Answer. I was running around downstairs like a mad ass fly because everyone was in. Everyone was in the room, and I didn't want everyone to be disrupted. My God, this is mm. really boring. For I've you just guys. cooked a katsu curry. I know, and I wish I'd had some. Wasn't enough for you. All oh, right. Okay. Mark Nadia, it's my daughter's birthday today. Her name is Danielle Sharon Elston. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Sharon Elston. No, Sharon Elston's Danielle. Sharon Elston's Danielle. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Everyone asking, well, not everyone, but a few people asking, uh, how was your dad's birthday? Oh, it was lovely. It, it was, was lovely, lovely, wasn't it? But he's just getting old. I don't want him to. He had fun. And he needs to have a heart operation, which we're waiting on. So, but it was lovely. It was that had that pathos to it, you know. Yeah. On the one hand, it was beautiful, but on the other hand, he each birthday he's getting on. He was eighty-eight. Yes, eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Is a he's good two age. years off ninety. Yeah, it's a good age. It's a good age. I reckon he's going to be here until at least one hundred and six. Oh, I pray. Yeah, I think so. Um, hi everyone. Hi, uh, how's Chi Chi? Felt so bad. Obviously, the vlogs. There's a lag with the vlogs. So those of you who follow us for a while know that Chi Chi has has muscled through. But yes, we're going through the journey of look at that lovely wind effect on your hair. Um, Chi Chi. So Chi Chi's just on a lot of steroids. Yeah. She's on daily eye treatment. But she's doing so well. The so only well. thing is, she's just bloody hungry all the time. So well. She's doing so well. Because of the steroids. Um, I, I read a story this morning when I was taking Kiki into school, and it said that it's really important that people fart when they need to fart. And apparently, and this is an interesting fact, apparently, on average, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, on average, people fart 14 times a day. So I thought, I want to ask all our subs, how many times do you think you fart in a given day? 
And I'm, I'm talking For about... you, that's in an hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about whilst you're awake, obviously, because at night, you know, Nadia's pooping like a nutter. She really is, in, in amongst the... So how many times would you... 105, Charolu. Cre create all it never counted. Thank you. Lior, 43. Lior, is that because you're vegan? Apparently, if you're more vegan, you fart more. You do. And if you eat wet fruit, like apricots, dates, and prunes, mm -hmm. it makes you raw like an absolute... And they actually mention falafel. Can I just say I'm not enjoying this conversation <laughs> at all? It's Sorry. Really at least 50. Look, Amelia Nicholson, 80,000. Ellery Jones, I have a problem. See? Oh, IBS, absolutely, Claire Hamer. It's, um, it's a problem, isn't it? Sorry, Sarah Witherington, she is eating. Okay, let's get off the subject. Um, so the big story that Nadia was really excited about was Kylie Jenner. Tell us what's happening. So Kylie Jenner is pregnant. Is she? Oh, there you go. Let's move on. Pregnant Next with story. her second baby. <laughs> it just did amaze me, actually, how many column inches were given to that. I think there was 43 million views of the little Instagram film that she did within something like an hour of her posting it. And so it was wow. like a minute and a half film her walking around her house with the positive oh, it was yeah. really nicely done actually was it and then a shot of her fella giving a big hug is Kylie and... Jenner the mum no that's Chris who's 71 so it'd be quite her oh, that's why I was shocked I didn't know whether this was the... I just couldn't believe the amount of column inches that were given it to given to this news it's lovely news always lovely news when somebody's pregnant yeah but my god the detail that they went into of every one of her relationships really what happened at this point what happened at that point i think because last time she was pregnant with stormy who's now three who's an adorable baby she kept it totally quiet she didn't go in public for the entire time she was pregnant right she didn't want anyone to know so obviously the media is going to go ballistic with this one mm. um but yesterday, is there much, is did there anybody to say, see? Is there much to say? Well, she's pregnant, so yeah. baby got oh, to right. have a nice okay. spin around her lovely house. Okay. Uh, and which one is Kylie Jenner? For those of you who don't know, Kylie Jenner is part of the Kardashian tribe. The very youngest. I think yeah. everyone knows who Kylie Jenner is. I don't, some people are saying, can we go back to farting? It was fun, <laughs> more fun. <laughs> um, I wonder if Kylie Jenner farts. Yeah, what was, was the other story you were going to say? Did anyone see? Did anyone see yesterday? Welcome, DC. A Kardashian DC. posted photographs with no edit. My God, she looked so different. And she posted it on purpose to show her natural body. Who, who did this? It was this one was Courtney. Right. Courtney Kardashian. Unbelievable. Absolutely okay. unbelievable. Got a huge response of people thanking them because, of course, the Kardashians mess up a lot of people's minds so because they're impossible bodies. Are we in the ludicrous situation where everyone will have got really large bottoms because uh, Kim got one and now everyone's going to go the route? Do they literally change trends? Like there, was they a photo, there was a photo the other day with her bum looking almost back to what it was. So it'd I be was interesting it to see if everyone sad. wants a small bum now. Yeah, I mean, is that, I mean, it could be that, couldn't it? Do you want a small bum or a big bum? Would you prefer a Kardashian bum or a tight wee bum? Say small or big. And in the meantime, now sing DC's name. DC. DC, welcome to the family guest area. DC, DC, DC. Welcome to the family guest area. Look, everyone's saying small. Yeah. Small This bump. is what's so weird. But there's all these people having these implants and all these young girls thinking they're not gorgeous at all because they don't have a huge bum. Mm. I'd like a small bum. Whatever you're born with, says Vanessa Wilde. I think it's a bit sad exactly. that people are so obsessed with them, says Michelle May. Exactly, for God's sake. What, with bums or with the Kardashians? Which you mean? With your bums. Oh, I well, see. both, I suppose. Bit of both. Um, okay, did anyone else see... What about... What do we all think of Gavin Williamson? God, I feel sorry for Gavin What do we all... He's a useless artist. What, did, did you see the story He's today? He's used as a chocolate pot. Have you seen the story today? Yeah. You did, with Marcus With a mix-up, yeah. What do we all think of Gavin Williamson, guys? I mean, I feel really, really sorry for him. I feel that. very sorry because for him. Because everything for me in life is about intention. Yeah. And he did not intend to offend. He did. This doesn't mean that he's a racist, but it, this will follow him. This will not be allowed to be forgiven, forgotten. Well, so Marcus Rashford uh, made a huge blunder um, whilst, uh, whilst talking on... I think he was talking on a podcast... Uh, and he referred to, he believed that he'd been talking to Marcus Rashford, uh, but in fact, he was talking to a rugby player 
uh, called Mario, what's his name? Mario Itoji. Um, but I thought Marcus Rashford dealt with it really funnily. Um, oh, I haven't heard what he said. Yeah, so Marcus Raff Rashford, so basically Gavin Williamson essentially mistook the two the two people for, you know, and I think the inference is, is that a sort of uh, a race thing or, or what is that? Um, and Marcus Rashford said, with great grace, I think, to kind of almost possibly neuter the whole thing, uh, instead of removing support through social security, we should be focusing on developing a sustainable... No, oh, no. Since I have your attention. Oh, what? no, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Before that, has get... Sorry, no, that's not it. Where is it? Where, he had a really good reply. Where was his reply? Uh, oh, yeah. Referencing his Mancunian origins and Itoji's London upbringing, Rashford tweeted on Wednesday, accent could have been a giveaway. Emoji. Because obviously it wasn't about the accent. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I, I felt... Then I, he went, whilst I've got your attention, yeah. can we talk about Social Security? Which is great. It's like, let's just... Let's not waste fire and brimstone and rage and anger and retribution... Because where does that go? Clearly the man made a mistake. He's a, he's a bit of a chocolate teapot, really, isn't he, Gavin Williamson? Yeah, it's his a favourite phrase, isn't it? Like? His intention, because that's what I think of him. When I, his intention wasn't e evil or bad. No, so let's just get, a bumbling let's idiot. Let's get on with something more important. And let's this is, talk this, about, what was it that he said? What was the actual line? But this was the tweet that Maro Itoji uh, said, which was due to recent speculation, I thought it was necessary to confirm that I am not, in fact, Marcus Rashford. And whilst we are here, my name is not Mario either, just a simple Maro Itoji. <laughs> so I think both guys involved dealt with that with dealt really with it really well, humorously exactly. and then used it as an opportunity. And I think that should be, if they're not offended, move on. I really do hate the offended police, people who rise up to be offended for people that, read, that deal with it as something. In a I tell you what, being on live television, well, even on this, it's a nightmare because you could so easily say something that might offend somebody that you wouldn't even know would be offensive. Yeah, but if you then, if you consider every conceivable thing that you could say that's offensive, you end up saying nothing. But what I hate is more and more these days as well, if somebody apologises, like say I said something that was truly offensive and I, I genuinely didn't know, I would absolutely say, oh my God, I'm so sorry to offend. I didn't realise. But these days... People still want blood, even once somebody's apologised. Oh, it's not they? enough. You can't it's say sorry. You can't say so you can't say sorry anymore. Yeah. Sorry is just sorry is an admission of guilt, and therefore you need to be punished even more. Mm. Um, I just want to be a fly on the wall in um, Tim Martin's office at Weatherspoons. I really do. I really want to be a really do want to oh, be a I fly. Don't. I don't. Oh, I do. Like I, I reckon there might be more than one fly on the wall in Tim Martin's Weatherspoons office, but I reckon he farts a bit as well. But I'd love to just be a fly in his room because even Heineken, Heineken have said that the lack of beer is a direct result of Brexit. How much more can someone say to the man who runs Weatherspoons, who was the biggest advocate of Brexit, because of Brexit, he can't sell beer? You know what James O'Brien said today on the radio? He was in McDonald's yesterday and they didn't have bottled water because of Brexit in McDonald's. Say that again. There was no bottled water, and apparently he was told that it was due to Brexit. McDonald's couldn't get the water through. Oh. When you think of the power of a of a, of a company like McDonald's, God. yeah, true. Yeah, that's funny. He's been left with no beer, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So I, I just you've swapped seats, says Nicola. Yeah, we have. Uh, so yeah, so there's a story today basically about Weatherspoons, um, IKEA, and a hundred thousand pigs. There's all sorts of different issues being affected by the Brexit supply chain problem. One of, the, one of the things I found most upsetting was this story around the fact that... Yeah, milkshakes, McDonald's run out of milkshakes. No, he said yesterday, yesterday he was in the room, there was no bottled water, he made yeah. a big thing yeah, about Yeah, run out of milkshakes and bottled drinks, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that because the chemicals can't get through from, um, due to Brexit, can't get through to this country that we need oh, to yes. treat Fergal, chemicals, Fergal. we are now... The government is allowing the untreated chemicals to be poured directly into our rivers. It's an absolute travesty. Yeah. And as they were saying on the radio today, did the water board or whatever they're called now, I don't know what they're called, not have a worst case scenario knowing for five years that Brexit was coming and think, what do we do if we haven't, or shall we get a big backlog Absolutely. of them? 
and they said it's just unbelievable because these people are paid millions of pounds. Yeah, absolutely. And they make millions. It's, the privatisation of the water board was a terrible thing. Was it Fergal Sharkey? Fergal Sharkey. Fergal Sharkey. Do you remember Fergal Sharkey? Yeah, he's, he's doing an MA in mm. climate change. Wow. Fergal Sharkey, what was the song he sang? He used to sing with a sort of really... Remember? Well, he's singing about the rivers now. He's very upset. Sky Elise, we absolutely are going to be responding to Home Time Part 2, but we always like to have Nanny Di in those, and she's only just arrived, so we'll probably be doing that at some point in the next 48 hours. Uh, thank you, Sky. Um, yeah, OK, I wanted to ask you guys, what would you most, what are you most worried about there being supply issues for you? Like, for Nanny Dive, for example, well, it would be toilet roll. Dad. Toilet roll. Oh, HRT. Out, outside, uh, uh, maybe outside of the medical emergencies. I mean, mine's Look, asthma. I don't think you can say outside. All right, I'm I mean, sorry. I, I, was think, just I think we should be... Trying to keep I it think, fun and fluffy. I think we should be more worried about HRT and insulin oh, look, and Ellen, yeah, HRT. epilepsy drugs then we should be bottled bloody water from McDonald's, and yet that's made the bloody news everywhere. Carly, you know, is worried about Christmas. Jenny Ward, coffee. Oh, my God, what would I do? <laughs> it's, coffee. The possibilities are real. Are the food real? chain coffee. is breaking down. m and is saying it is a serious problem. Apparently Percy pigs are under threat. Apparently they're becoming a sort of endangered confectionery. Outside of anything me medical, it'd be flour, says Lucy Williams. That's very practical. That's very. Yeah. We have a huge problem with flour anyway because we haven't got the. We had that, didn't we, in the pandemic? Flour is a problem. That's a curious one, beautiful heart said. Oh, pears. Fruit. Oh, pears. Oh, pears. Yeah. oh, interesting. You don't mean pears, you mean oh, pears. I always thought when people said oh, pears, I thought they were responding to a bowl of pears. I thought they were going, oh, pears. No milk and bread in Sainsbury's. You're shitting me not. Oh. That's right. I don't know what happened to me there. I suddenly became all Dick Emery. You are naughty, but I do like you. You'll have to have a protein drink remember? for dinner, I'm too tired. <laughs> oh, you are naughty, but I do like you. Why are you so small? Sitting in the morning, morning sun. sun. <laughs> I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Two thousand miles I roamed. Just to make this duck my home. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. Um, so, yeah, where the sp anyway, so Tim Martin must be farting like a nutter because at the end of the day, he's going to bug it all, all, everything up for his own pubs. <laughs> Get a room, says Saab Turbo. It's quite Turbo. extraordinary, isn't, isn't it? it? I mean, does he feel at all? Would he, I wonder if in any moment he would say to anyone, I'm sure James would find out, bloody hell, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. Do yeah. you think, does anyone, it was interesting, does it was interesting the other day on Nick Ferrari, there was a woman who was a very, very good phone call. She was actually an employer, but she was talking about how she felt that the 120 grand fine um, that was imposed, that the woman won who, who had who had tried to change her working hours because she'd had a baby. And oh, yes, she won a 180,000 pound claim. Yeah, yeah, 120, yeah. I think. And anyway, so... <sighs> He was loving, Hi, he was absolutely loving this phone call with this woman, Nick Ferrari. And he made the call go on for a really long time. He's chatting, oh, and what sort of business? And she had four kids. And because when she first started talking, didn't realize she was an employer. You thought she was an employee. And then she moved on to being an employee. And she was a lovely woman. Yeah. And, um, oh, you know, it's, oh, what is your business saying? Give your business a bit of a plug. She said, well, well we, um, we sell parts for boats. Right. And he went, oh, how interesting. You don't think of that, do you? You don't think of a company selling boats. So how, how's it going? Business good? And she went, things are dire. And he went, and the whole, the whole thing collapsed. He went, and she didn't want to say, because obviously he's a mad mm. Brexiteer, and he went, but he had to ask the question. And he goes, and, and why is that? But you can tell he didn't want to ask the question, because she said, well, you know, Brexit, it's, we can't get anything. We can't yeah. get anything through. Oh, OK. Well, thank you so much for your call today yeah. and got her off yeah. the phone. Well, Karen S says, maybe we should do a Buy British campaign and stop the imports. More work and business for us win-win. I, I get what you're saying, and that's the... A long term. But long in the term. Mean, you need to have well, a bridging loan. Yeah, no, but also long term, that makes sense. But But hang on a minute. We live in a multicultural, connected... It's a super village, isn't it, the planet? And I don't think... I think people want Heineken from where Heineken comes from. Yeah. Or people want... I don't want Heineken San, made in... San Miguel. I don't want Heineken made in... Made in... Romford. Romford. Yeah. Romford. We're sort of similar parts of London, but different sides the of the place. river. Um, do you know what I mean, Karen? So I, I don't what want, you're saying. I don't want my... Um, what do I want? I don't want my camembert. 
Yeah. I don't want my camembert from Salford. No, that's a good point. I don't want my don't want my ricotta from Richmond. Why well, wouldn't mind having my ricotta from Richmond? I wouldn't want my ricotta from Risley. Yeah. Um, Mike Roberts, don't blame Brexit for the beer, as most is brewed in the UK under licence. It's very true, very true. But not the Heineken. But not the Heineken. Yeah, the beer's good. I have to say, does anyone else like Adams? Apparently it doesn't travel. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Hayley. Happy birthday Hayley. Fisher has asked for us to sing to you happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Um, Elijah is asking, do you think we'll have a fire break in October? I said this to Nadia earlier today and she said, what do you mean? This is the possibility of a, a, of a prolonged half term. Yeah. Two week half term. What do you think, guys? Can I ask you? Do you think we should have a fire break? That's what I mean by fire break. I don't mean like literally a break in front of a fire with a nice cup of cocoa. Oh, that would be lovely. Uh, a fire break. Do you think we should have a fire break? Do you think there's going to be a fire break? Do you think there's going to be a fire break? Oh, so you're speaking very, very fast. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wish I'd like to go slower. So I'm quite you're happy to slow down. Yourself. I'm utterly exhausted. You're going a million miles. Me, Maddie and Annie Dyer are doing a load of uh, trailer reactions later and I'm You've got to stop. When are you going to stop? I can't. <laughs> um, yeah, fire, fire break. Um, I thought this story would excite you, Nads. Dawn Clarico says it's the media stirring it up again. Yeah, of course it is. Um, although the number of deaths today was a little bit alarming, wasn't it? It was 193. <laughs> you sort of think, oh God, I hope they don't go up again. Um, Anne Henderson, making Europeans feel unwelcome is the cause of a shortage of drivers, carers and fruit pickers. Couldn't, couldn't say it easy. We couldn't haven't, I was more, listening more simply, to a terrifying um, interview. She was so good, again on the radio the other day, with the head of the carers. I don't, yeah. I don't know what happened. And, oh my God, it's so, so bad. So bad, the situation with carers. For a number of things, there's this threat to carers that they won't be able to work unless they have the vaccine. A lot of them at the age where they're trying to get pregnant or they're mm. pregnant or whatever. So they're leaving the care system. Right. Because at the moment they can go into the NHS and not have the COVID vaccine. Right. And they get paid more money. Listen to this. Amazon, listen, listen to this. Amazon apparently yeah. are draining the care system of carers by offering them, actively headhunting them and offering them, I don't know how much more. Wow. Than now... The way I see to fix this is you've got to pay the carers more because these homes, these private homes make a lot of money, mm. you know, and, and and she was saying, you know, you need to call, this needs to be, you know, they need to be treated as professionals. Because did you hear what the government's idea was? No. Oh, you're not going to believe this. Go, okay, tell me. To bring librarians over to the care system to care, to work in old people's homes. Can I, can I hang on. Before and you. she was like... She says, oh my God, this again just shows how numpty the government are. She says, it's a very specific thing yeah, being a carer. Uh, you have to be a very certain kind of person. Yes. You know, I couldn't imagine doing that job in a million years. You have to have such a big heart. You know, my friend Kaz, yes. that's the kind of, she have, you have to yes, have that absolutely. kind of heart. And also, can I just say, this idea of librarians is terrible because librarians are, are routinely quite strict and, and sort of, you know, I mean, like my mum is a librarian and, and she's lovely and everything, but she's not plugged into the nuance of emotional needs. Well, listen, who can know? There'll be plenty of librarians. No, there, there are many, but I don't no, think no, it's but a the quick point is, swap. You cannot just shift one profession over to another. No. I think it's disrespectful to the librarians, I think it's disrespectful to the care workers. I, I agree. And actually, the more I... Li I didn't even know this story, the more I listened to it, the more outraged I You didn't got. even know you were outraged, did you? Because, no, when I was listening to it, because it was like, they spoke to a number of care home mm. owners, and a number of times the question was, well, would the way around this be to pay them more? Mm. And everyone dodged the bloody question. Mm. You know, make them a professional. Make, give them the respect because that's the other thing apparently that is draining the system of the carers. Or they don't feel like they get the respect. They're seen as second class citizens almost within the mm. NHS. And they do the work that a lot of people would shy for, away yeah. from. So. As someone just said there, uh, librarianship is a very specific and tailored art. I mean, my, yeah. my mum is incredibly as good. As is caring. Incredibly good as at choosing books. As is being a carer. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But the idea that they're just... a yeah. Just like, swap them in. It's like plucking a I mean, it's, it's so like, insane. It's like going, I tell you what, let's say all butchers need to yeah. become counsellors. It, it's just it's just madness, absolute madness. But the but but there was this one guy who rang up, and do you know what? 
some of these private agencies because they're having to all the time take private nurses because they mm. they haven't got enough staff they've been pinged or whatever and they're charging sometimes a hundred pounds an hour wow now how wow. much is that carer getting of that honey? yeah yeah now true. that i would call profiteering through war wow I would, because no, we're words. in a war. The pandemic yeah. is effectively a war against our health. Mm. And to absolutely, to profiteer in that way and chop, 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 quadruple the hourly rate, mm. it's disgusting. Uh, Janet Emmerich, I am outraged that care workers are being sacked for not having the jab when Dr John Campbell confirmed last week that if you catch COVID jabbed or not, you spread the same viral load. Very good point, very good Did point. Did he say that? Yes. The same viral Yeah, yeah, load. he did. He, you drifted off at that point. I was quite shocked when he said that. It doesn't matter whether wow. you've been vaccinated or not. You carry the same. But here's another little detail on that, which uh, I loved the language. I'm just using this headline because I loved the language in this headline, right? It says, vaccination after COVID infection gives some people superhuman immunity. Yeah, no, I knew that because you, that's what you want. You want you want a vaccine and, and, to, have the, and, the, and to have had it because... Is it different if you get COVID after vaccination or are they saying that vaccination after COVID, you, you know, in the, in the way that Maddie is? Well, I mean, it'd be much better to get it after vaccination because you're not going to get it as badly. You're not going to be as ill. But, I mean, yeah, we I were interviewing so. Christa Berg the other day. He's 71. Lady he was just about to go red. on tour. Sorry. And um, <laughs> you're literally exhausted. <laughs> I just love He's Lady so, in Red. Um, oh, so, God, yeah, so he had to do a test because he was going to go on tour. Yeah. And he was so gobsmacked when it was positive. Oh, was he? Because he, he just he didn't, didn't feel, feel it at all. And he's 71. He said, thank God I was double vaxxed because it probably would have been a very depressed Because yeah. otherwise he'd have been, lady in bed is where I've got to be. Cheek to cheek. I only okay, okay, hug don't go too mad. people when I'm... Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, final story, Britney Spears. What do we make of this? Britney Spears' newfound freedom is a massive legal victory, says lawyer, as her father um, has filed an official court petition to terminate his daughter's conservatorship. Is, people are saying, is he trying to beat a retreat out of the barn before the barn doors slam shut on him? What do you think, guys? Well, I suppose this could be a number of things. He could, if you're standing in his shoes, because yes. we don't know if he's lied and cheated and stolen her money and been scurrilous, mm. or whether he was a father that was desperately trying to help his daughter with the mental illness. Who will ever know? I mean, I tend to swing the other way with everything that I've seen and heard, but um, so he, it could be a, a father that's very hurt and just gone, do you know what? I'm out of it. Do you know what? After all of what, you, I'm out of it. You deal with it. Let's see what happens. What's your hunch tell you? Or that? it could be somebody that is just, yeah, let me get out of here before I get done. Well, I think the whole thing sounds absolutely wrong. When you when you see that this a conservatorship <coughs> is supposed to be for people yes. that are so infirm, like with yeah. Alzheimer's, and he, and she was doing eight shows a week <coughs> in yeah. Vegas. No, I agree. Imagine being the parent of something like that. And that, sorry. now, obviously, she has got mental health issues. Issues, mm. and I know today I was listening on the radio so again, today. and a uh, showbiz woman was saying that. Um, that she's spoken to the management yesterday and the management has said we are no longer i thought this was quite interesting we are no longer looking after anything on her social media wow now there's been all this speculation all the way through hasn't it from the fans from the free britney fans that yeah. have never given up on her that the social media you know looking oh she's wearing the same outfit it looks like the same day and have been very very suspicious of her output on social media because yeah. they felt it's been done by well, often she's been in one item and they've posted like over a long period of time yeah lots they? of yeah. different things and then the last a few weeks ago she was she was posting quite a few topless yeah. photos and i remember i read quite a few comments saying yeah, britney don't go too far too soon we're trying to free you <laughs> yes yeah yeah well you know what but i wonder whether that was a sort of really unfair press that was doing that because also there was the story of her assaulting her carer of her dog wasn't there that was chucked out as a load of old nonsense. You know, I just felt that there was a narrative dark, wanting that, yes, dark forces. For me, forces. I think there's dark forces. Yeah. Obviously, she has her challenges, like we all do, but it's, it. I think, you know, all this stuff coming out about yeah. all the family getting money, and I really feel sorry for, you know, 
if it's true that she wasn't allowed to have a baby, wasn't allowed to try for another baby when she lost her two sons mm. to the... I just think, God, that poor woman. Um, Faith Goodman says he's jumping before being pushed. I've seen that in mm. quite a few places and, and we wonder whether that is the case. Um, hit, the, uh, hit, hit the like button, or which is a thumbs up button, just beneath my, well, my cat head, if that's how we present, but it might present underneath Nadia's boobs. In which case, just hit it because it makes us feel really light, really nice and lovely. Um, Carla, Carla Hatcham, happy birthday. She wants me to do this. Happy birthday to you. How many? Can happy I just birthday ask you how many, before we do the birth, you. Can you tell me any coffees you had just before we did this? I haven't had any. Mark. I haven't had it. But come on, but, who's going to guess on, how many coffees on. he's had? I did forget to take my pill this morning. No, we don't say that because that's not. But you always your coffee. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Shh. Happy birthday, dear Carla Hatcham. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Rhys Roberts reminds us that there is a vital drama coming on Channel 4 uh, in the next week or so. Rhys, I just want to get it because it's uh, so important and I'm so excited about it because we posted about it on the Popcorn Junkies, but your comment has gone flying up. Is it, what's it called? It's called Help, I think. And it's yeah. about Stephen Graham and Jodie Comer. You've seen about this. Stephen Graham, oh, yeah. Jodie Comer, in a care, about the care home system. It's going to be bloody grueling. brilliant and gruelling. But those two grueling. actors, it's going to be yeah. astonishing. Um, so do we will be checking that out. And we will be reviewing it as long as it doesn't traumatise Nadia in the way that the prison one did. Final thing that I'd like to say before we go. I caught, please will all of you after this, go and see the footage of the earthquake in Mexico, not for the earthquake, oh, no. it's terrible, a 4-7 magnitude earthquake, and see if you can try and explain why the skies were making such different colours. It didn't look like an earthquake to me. What's it look like? Look at the footage, just go online and say skyline, your, what, skyline what? in Mexico of earthquake. Well, I can't work it out. Oh. Either it's electric, either it's all the buildings falling apart and electricity flying into the sky, but it, it goes on for too long, and I've never seen footage of it around. It just looks like, lights in the sky go and check it out please go and check it out and tell us what you think they are when you when you have underneath this when it's uploaded here you go thank you guys if this is your first time with us hit the subscribe button oh. notification don't mark don't knock anything oh, 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 God. Uh, exactly what i've been looking for for weeks ready no mark don't because it will hurt just being really stupid put it down okay. put it down stop Thank you for spending time with us, guys. I hope you have a more peaceful husband than I do. See you on Loose Women tomorrow. See you.